Welcome back. Cuba's a fight against its tyrannical government raging on, but will Democrats finally take this as a sign that socialism does not work? Cuba is a failure because socialism doesn't work. Trump turned the screws on the regime in Havana and in Venezuela. Biden wants to liberalize all that, and I think all that will do is entrench the regime in power. This is what tyrannies do, and that's what Marxism does. They hold people hostage. The Cuban people are their hostages. You've got the two people in charge of Cuba policy right now, and the Biden administration want to open it all up. Here to discuss is Fox News contributor and retired Marine mom technician, Joey Jones, and our friend and our first in-studio uh, guest. Oh, wow. And we're very excited it's you. I'm happy excited happy to be um, yeah. belated birthday yesterday, anyway. Yeah, I did. I turned old enough to run for president, so I'm going to run. Ah, oh, hey, so are you going to? Are we a, is there to breaking so. news here? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> that would have been awesome if you could have made that announcement at oh. 531 on our show. But, <laughs> it's you know, no a, pressure. It's just a funny milestone. Okay, so um, so, so what do you think? Uh, you know, I'm, are you still still surprised that people want socialism in this country? No, not at all. When you grow up as, as in a place as prosperous and spoiled as we live in, it's easy to criticize it or look at things that may seem okay on paper and kind of ignore the parts that really suck about it. Like maybe we have a million or more people here in this country that came here from Cuba and could tell us what's going on there. That's too much, I guess, obvious evidence because some professor at Cal Berkeley or somewhere like that said this system would be fantastic if everyone were pure and honest. Okay, but to that point, in this moment, when we're looking at Cuba, when Cuba is top of mind every single day, is the message of socialism failure getting through to that person who's been indoctrinated at those liberal universities who says, eh, socialism, not horrible. Is that message Yeah, but it doesn't through? seem like it. Well, I, I can't remember who now, and I'm, I'm sorry, I can't attribute it to them, but someone pointed out last week that the way we treat our really Gen Zers, our young crowd, is to kind of talk about them like they're stupid a little bit and say, hey, um, you know, I know you don't haven't been into the real world yet and you don't understand, but I think the better way to handle this and, and not to be overly benevolent today after my birthday, but basically is to reach out and talk to these folks and to give them opportunities to hear from people that, that were raised in Cuba or had to leave or flee or flee Cuba. But, and then also, because I think this message of like explaining to them how great this country is, isn't getting across because okay. they don't know anything else. But maybe having someone explain to them how bad things are in other places. You know, there's an anecdote that says, if you're under 30 and you're conservative, you're heartless. But if you're over 30 and you're liberal, you're broke. And so neither one of those things are really true, but that's their perspective, right? We have to have an opportunity to grow and learn and mature get new priorities and get new perspectives. And so I just hope that people are reaching what seems to be a young crowd that's all for socialism but aren't even paying taxes yet. Well, and as someone who's, you know, sacrificed your life, lost your legs fighting for our country, which thank you for your service, uh, what would you say to those younger kids then? If you had the opportunity to personally sit down and speak to them, what would your message be? Yeah, yeah, I've been injured in, in service this country, but before I was ever injured, I was in two countries that literally were fighting some semblance of a civil war or were the basically the battleground for the entire world to fight over things like freedom and democracy. And I saw people come running to us because they didn't have an emergency room within 100 miles. And they would use our bases for an emergency room for their child that they didn't know how to take care of. And that type of both ignorance and lack of resources ran rampant in southern Afghanistan and even places in Iraq. And for people to understand what this country is and to take issue with our core principle of just democracy in general or capitalism, I feel like they just don't have perspective. And, and I, it's easy to get mad at them. I do get mad about it. But rather than getting mad at some 22 or 24 year old that makes it onto some uh, campus reform video talking about how they're ashamed of the country, I'd rather just maybe sit down and have a conversation with them. I think most young people want to be led. The problem is the people who have filled that gap are ideologues that don't truly appreciate this country. With that as the backdrop, U.S. women's soccer team, other squads kneeling in protest before Olympic matches. What's your reaction to what you saw? So <laughs> I had to learn about this because I'm not tuning in. And I'm not, not tuning in because I'm just vindictive. It's just not interesting anymore. Um, my first response is we lost three to nothing, I think, to Sweden. So maybe, mm -hmm. maybe uh, focus on, on playing good soccer because we supported you when you did. And it was after you won a championship and you decided to protest that we said, you know what, we're going to tune out. But beyond that, I believe they protested not during the anthem, but at the beginning of the match. Right. Well, there are rules now. And, and we have to be we have to be 
intellectually honest and say, okay, well, when they were protesting during the anthem, most of us were saying, it's because you're protesting during the anthem that we're offended by this. So, I, you know, if you're going to do it this way, they all stood for the anthem. They decided to protest. I hope they use their platform for good, but I hope they use the field to win some matches because I want to see USA up top. Yeah. Well, you've always been very measured in your thoughts. That's why we love having you on. It's hard to get, hard to get too upset before right. 6 a.m., I guess. Sure. But well, as no, we, we, you yeah. can. <laughs> but as we did learn at the top of the program, if you kick the ball in the goal, you will win. That was more times soccer, than the other team. Expert soccer That's advice. how that works. So. <laughs> Joey Jones, awesome to have you here as our Thank first you. guest on set for a really, for really long time. It's yeah. great to see you, friend. All right.